Canadian Mental Health Association, Wikipedia article audio. The Canadian Mental Health Association is the Canadian association founded on April 26, 1918 by Dr. Clarence M. Hinks and Clifford W. Beers. Originally named the Canadian National Committee for Mental Hygiene, it is one of the largest and oldest voluntary health organizations operating in Canada. Each year, CMHA divisions and branches across Canada provide service to more than 1.3 million Canadians annually through the combined efforts of more than 10,000 volunteers and staff in locally run organizations in more than 300 communities. History The Canadian Mental Health Association began existence as the Canadian National Committee for Mental Hygiene, founded by Dr. Clarence M. Hinks and Clifford W. Beers on April 26, 1918. Hinks was very interested in the field because he had experienced bouts of mental illness. The Globe and Mail reported the group's formation under the headline, $20,000 secured for Institute, Canadian National Committee for Mental Hygiene started in Mrs. Dunlap's home. A short historical note records the purposes and objectives of the Canadian National Committee for Mental Hygiene, as tentatively described at that first meeting. They included 1. War Work Psychiatric Examination of Recruits Adequate care of returned soldiers suffering from mental disabilities. 2. Mental examination of immigrants to ensure a better selection of newcomers. 3. Adequate facilities for the diagnosis and treatment of cases of mental disease. 4. Adequate care of the mentally deficient. 5. Prevention of Mental Disease and Deficiency Hinks solicited friends and professionals to join the committee, with an emphasis on those in the medical profession. He already had the backing of C.K. Clark, Dean of Medicine and Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Toronto, his persuasive address to the medical faculty of McGill won him its unanimous approval. Hinks then established a board of directors. He asked 20 business and professional leaders to sit on the board, 18 accepted. Among them were Lord Shaughnessy, President of the CPR, Richard B. Angus, Montreal financier and philanthropist, Dr. C.F. Martin, Professor of Medicine, McGill University, Sir Vincent Meredith. President, Bank of Montreal, and F.W. Malson, President of Malson's Brewery. Each agreed to pledge $1,000 a year for three years towards the expenses of the new organization. Hinks gained further support through a series of drawing room meetings. These were afternoon teas hosted by socially prominent women each of whom invited her wealthy and influential friends. Hicks would present a speaker, his friend, and co-founder Clifford W. Beers, author of the book, A Mind That Found Itself. It gave a graphic account of Beers' own mental illness and the treatment he received, some of it rather abusive and even cruel. Hinks's extended the strategy to homes of friends in Quebec City, Montreal, and Ottawa. It proved very successful, he recruited an impressive list of potential members and donors. The first official meeting of the CNCMH was held in Ottawa on April 26, 1918. A provisional constitution was adopted. Dr. C.F. Martin, professor of medicine at McGill University, was elected president. Dr. C.K. Clark was appointed medical director, and Dr. C.M. Hinks was appointed associate medical director and secretary. In the fall of 1918, 
the committee established itself at 143 College St in Toronto. Joining Clark and Hinks were Miss Marjorie Keyes and two secretaries, Ann Abbott and Doris Secord. Miss Keyes was a graduate nurse who had been associated with Dr. Clark and Dr. Hinks at the outpatient psychiatric clinic at Toronto General Hospital. During the summer of 1918, Miss Keyes prepared for her new role by taking psychiatric studies at Smith College. Lieutenant Colonel Colin Russell soon gave the CNCMH an opportunity to undertake an important project. Russell was the consultant neurologist to the Department of Soldiers, and had visited many of the provincial mental hospitals which were caring for soldier patients. He was particularly distressed with those facilities in Manitoba. That province's government included with the mental hospitals in the province, all the institutions presently caring for the mentally disordered or defective including jails, schools, special homes and juvenile courts. On September 30, 1918, Hinks and Keyes arrived in Winnipeg, where they visited several institutions. They also toured the Salvation Army Industrial Home and the Home for Incurables in Portage La Prairie and were so shocked by what they found that they immediately returned to Winnipeg to consult with government representatives. The CNCMH prepared a confidential report on its findings which was submitted to the government and the Public Welfare Commission. As a result of the Manitoba survey, and that province's quick response in implementing the recommendations, other provinces became interested in having similar surveys. During the next four years, requests for surveys were received from British Columbia, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. As in Manitoba, these surveys included all institutions. Results of these surveys, however, have had controversial implications, including how they were used to argue for pro-sterilization policies by the Alberta Eugenics Board and in the form of the Sexual Sterilization Act of Alberta. The CNCMH also was very involved in the plight of soldiers. It became evident to Hinks that soldiers under care were not receiving adequate treatment. Assisted by Miss Keyes, Dr. Clark conducted a quick inspection soldier patients in ten hospitals in the Western. The results of this preliminary survey were published in 1920. Highlighting the problem of shell shock and other neuropsychiatric disorders affecting so many able-bodied men helped pave the way for the work of the National Committee. The CNCMH was also interested in advocated improvements to the psychiatric screening of immigrants. Dr. Clark's lectures and official reports emphasized this fact. Schools were another areas of involvement. Dr. Hinks and Dr. Helen McMurchie pressed for surveys to assess the extent of mental retardation and other psychiatric disorders among school children and to provide support for the establishment of auxiliary classes for the special education of such children. In its first five years, the CNCMH built a firm foundation for meeting the objectives established in 1918. Surveys on the care and treatment of people suffering from mental disorders were conducted in every province. Mental hospitals in all provinces, except Ontario and Quebec, were inspected at the request of provincial governments. The extent of mental disorder was found to be greater than expected, and preventive programs were non-existent. In accordance with the committee's recommendations, provincial governments spent over $6 million on improving facilities for the mentally ill. CNCMH surveys of school children, conducted in several centres in Ontario and Quebec, resulted in over 150 special classes for retarded children being established by school boards. Mental hygiene clinics were promoted and, in some cases, 
partially supported. A study of the psychiatric screening of immigrants resulted in a reduction of the number of new Canadians with mental disorders. The problem of shell shock and the rehabilitation of soldiers suffering from mental and nervous disorders was addressed through cooperation with DSCR and the Director General of Medical Services in the Army. A beginning was made on public and professional education in mental hygiene and psychiatry.